Hi, my name is Miklos Kremzer, and today in this video I'm going to talk about a very specific kind of max diff analysis called a bandit max diff. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with uh, max diff and the purpose of max diff, but what is uh, bandit max diff? <laughs> Well, the problem a lot of times that we run into in max diff analysis is that the clients hand you a very long list of items, 40, 50, 60, 100, 200 items to put into a max diff analysis. And what you're risking at this point is you're going to have less robust results. And a lot of times respondents actually will not know or will not have the chance to see all of the items and you're not going to be very confident in your results. So a lot of times in these cases, uh, we researchers tend to do some exercise to call down the, the number of items, potentially a Q sort exercise or some other way, uh, ask respondents to pick their favorite. But one very clever uh, way to do that is a uh, technique called, called Bandit Maxtiff. And Bandit Maxtiff actually was introduced about five years ago at Sawtooth Conference. It's actually available with uh, Sawtooth software. And the way it works is, think about it for a second, as respondents are going through the Maxtiff exercise and the sixth and the 10th and the 15th and the 20th respondents is going through their choices. When we get to the 60th um, respondents or the 100th respondents, we're still asking the same questions. Pick your favorite, pick your least favorite and then we're gonna go ahead and do that analysis. But really, after the 10th or the 20th respondent, we should know the favorites, which are the ones that are tending to be the favorite and which are the ones that tend to be less favored. And that's exactly what Bandit Maxtiff does. It's learning, it's learning as respondents are going through the exercise, what the better ones and the, and the, and the worst items are. And it's going to start to oversample the better items, the items that um, have been have been favored, it's going to use the Thompson sampling methodology, and it's, to, it's going to start to oversample um, the winners. Uh, and the result of that is that the 60th or the 100th or the 200th respondents, they really are going to choose among the winners. It's basically a, a form of a, a tournament max diff to have a lot more accuracy among the winners. Now, you may say, well, how about the losers? We're, we're, we're basically losing information about the losers. And the truth is that the clients don't care. Nobody really cares about uh, the losers. So it's actually really not a problem. What you really want to know is what the winners are. You know, they care about the first and the second and the third and the fourth best item. And they care much less about the 46th item or the 67th item. And so that's a fantastic technique to actually get really good accuracy about the, about the winners, especially when you have a very large, a very large number of, of items to choose from. So why called Bandit Max Diff? Why Bandit? You're probably familiar with the one-armed bandits from casinos. Um, these are slot machines that uh, almost always take your money. And uh, there's a statistical technique called multi-armed bandit. Uh, technique or problem basically what the way it works is it looks uh, across various time periods and looks at the various outcomes and it tries to maximize this outcome across these time periods and uh, bandit max actually uses a very similar technique it uses as I mentioned the Thompson sampling uh, it uses across the various time period and it's looking to maximize the items um, that respondents see so that really is um, what uh, Bandit Maxif is. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment sections below. Also, this is a good time to ask you to please subscribe. I'm planning on providing a lot of really inter interesting insights when it comes to market research and data science and analytics. Uh, I plan to do them once a week. So please subscribe and uh, hope to see you here. Thank you.